Okay. Yeah, I just got to hang on one sec. Okay, we'll, we'll wait a second. Had some kind of technical issue here. <laughs> there we are. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, increase in us the gifts of faith, hope, and charity, and that we may obtain what you promise. Make us love what you command through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The first reading is from Deuteronomy. Moses went up from the plains of Moab to Mount Nebo to the top of Pisgah, which is opposite Jericho, 
and the Lord showed him the whole land, Gilead as far as Dan, all Naphtali, the land of Ephraim and Manasseh, all the land of Judah, as far as the Western Sea, the Negreb and the plain, that is the Valley of Jericho, the, sea, or the city of palm trees, as far as Zoar, the Lord said to him, this is the land of which I swore to Abraham, to Isaac and to Jacob saying, I will give it to your descendants. I have let you see it with your eyes, but you shall not cross over there. Then Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab at the Lord's command. He was buried in the valley in the land of Moab, opposite Beth Peor, but no one knows his burial place to this day. Moses was 120 years old when he died. He, his sight was unimpaired and his vigor had not abated. The Israelites wept for Moses in the plains of Moab 30 days. Then the period of mourning for Moses was ended. Joshua, son of Nun, was full of, spirit of, of the spirit of wisdom because Moses had laid his hands on him and the Israelites obeyed him, doing as the Lord had commanded Moses. Never since has there arisen a prophet in Israel like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. He was unequaled for all the signs and wonder that the Lord sent him to perform in the land of Egypt against Pharaoh and all his servants and his entire land. And for all the mighty deeds and all the terrifying displays of power that Moses performed in the sight of all Israel. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The psalm for this morning is Psalm 90. We'll recite the psalm by whole verse responsively. Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to another. Before the mountains were brought forth or the land and the earth were born, from age to age, you are God. You turn us back to the dust and say, go back, O child of earth. For a thousand years in your sight, are like yesterday when it is past, and like a watch in the night. You sweep us away like a dream. We fade away suddenly like the grass. In the morning it is green and flourishes. In the evening it is dried up and withered. Return, O Lord, how long will you tarry? Be gracious to your servants. Satisfy us by your loving kindness in the morning, so we shall so shall we rejoice and be glad all the days of our lives. Make us glad by the measure of the days that you afflicted us and the years in which we suffered adversity. Show your servants your works and your splendor to the children. May the graciousness of the Lord our God be upon us. Prosper the work of our hands. Prosper our handiwork. Second reading is from Thessalonians. You yourselves know, brothers and sisters, that our coming to you was not in vain, but that we had already suffered and had been shamefully mistreated at Philippi. As you know, we had courage in our God to declare to you the gospel of God in spite of great opposition. For our appeal does not spring from deceit or impure motives or trickery. But just as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the message of the gospel, even so we speak, not to please mortals, but to please God who tests our hearts. As you know, and, and as our God, and as God is our witness, we never came with words of flattery or, pre, or with a pretext for greed, nor do we seek praise from mortals, whether from you or from others, that we might have made demands as apostles of Christ. But we were gentle among you, like a nurse tenderly caring for her own children. So deeply we do care for you that we are determined to share with you not only the gospel of God, but also of our own selves, because you have become very dear to us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together and one of them, a lawyer, asked a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Now, while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them this question. What do you think of the Messiah? Whose son is he? They said to him, the son of David. He said to them, how is it then that David by the spirit calls him Lord, saying, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I put my enemies under your feet. If David thus calls him Lord, how can he be his son? No one was able to give him an answer, nor from that day did anyone dare ask him any more questions. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Bishop Curry is very often quoted, if it's not about love, it's not about God. And throughout this pandemic and all of the, the stuff that we've been dealing with, with the economic hardship, the isolation, the uncertainty about the future, racial unrest, the division within our country that seems to be getting wider and wider. I think my personal mantra on how I've been getting through all of this is, if it's not about love, it's not about God, period. And when I see things that are upsetting and hurtful, things that I know I can't do anything about and can't control, I go back to that mantra and just choose to focus on the things that are about love. And as the Pharisees come to Jesus this morning to challenge him about the commandments, and they're trying to trap him, it's what they do. I mean, they did it over and over again. You can see it in all the gospel stories multiple times. I love that this fine, this, this one passage says, no one dared ask him any more questions after this, because finally he had enough and kind of put it right back to him. So that was kind of good. But there's always this kind of debate between the legal experts, Pharisees, lawyers, um, Sadducees, members of the Sanhedrin, um, all of the different religious sects, and they come and they ask these questions, challenging him, challenging authority. It's some of it probably trying to figure out who he is. Some of it probably trying to see for themselves this, this person that everybody's been talking about and word has gone all over the countryside about and trying to say, okay, I need to have this my own experience and check this out for myself. But also maybe some of it trying to prove to the people that maybe he isn't what everybody thinks he is. And, you know, I, I've come to a certain point in my life where I don't know, maybe I'm a little bit cynical or maybe I've just learned that people say a lot of things, but if you really want to know who they are, you look at what they do. Do their actions really stand by what they say? Do they act on what they say they believe? Do they treat people the way they say they do? If you look at the actions, do they line up with who this person represents themselves to be? And I make a lot of decisions based on that. You know, how, how close of a relationship I have with another person. Um, do I cho choose to engage in a deeper conversation or do I know that if that's really not gonna go anywhere? And 
you know, throughout all of this time of isolation, I'm just trying to stay focused on the good. If it's not about love, it's not about God. So what does love look like? And for that, we have a very good description. You all know it. 1 Corinthians 13. I think it's read at pretty much every wedding, although it isn't about romantic love. It's about how people are to treat one another. And I'm just going to read just verses four through seven, because it's the description, the definition of love, that love is patient and love is kind. It is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. That is what love is. So if someone says they love you, but they don't treat you like this, they're probably not loving you. Now that's not to say we don't all have bad days and we don't have days where we're irritable. Of course you have, we have irritability. Of course you have things, you know, days where somebody's getting on your last nerve. And when you're quarantined with people and you're having to deal with stuff over and over again, and the smaller your space and the smaller space you're quarantined with other people, you're going to have stuff. You're going to learn a lot about each other, probably stuff you never wanted to know. But underneath all of that stuff, is there still kindness? Is there still respect? You know, in our baptismal vows, we vow to respect the dignity of every human being. I would say that's also a characteristic of love, where we are choosing to respect everyone's dignity. Now, let's be clear about that. That doesn't mean you have to like them. There are gonna be people in this world that we don't like. There are gonna be people in this world that we don't agree with. And we can choose to have a close relationship with those people or not, but we still treat them with respect and dignity. We still love our neighbor, which means we are patient with our neighbors and we are kind to our neighbors, even when it's hard. Kindness does not mean getting walked on or tolerating abuse or disparaging. It does mean though, that we do treat other people the way we would want to be treated in that same scenario. You know, there are times when people just get on our last nerve, even if it's just a terrible driver that cuts us off in traffic or someone who just kind of says something flippant and, and sarcastic and we don't really know where that's coming from. I mean, we have to keep in mind, sometimes we don't know what's going on with the other people. We don't know what they've been through. We don't know where they've been. We don't know what hurts they've suffered. And if we keep in our minds, you know, a prayer that says, you know, God, help me see the world and, and these people the way you see them. I think what we would see is really heartbreaking. I think it we would see people who are really hurting and wanting to be loved and having that sense of they can be 100% themselves and be accepted. I think that's the beautiful thing about Trinity is I think that we, we do that for one another, that this is a community where people can come and be themselves with all of our individuality and our, frankly, weirdness and be accepted and loved for exactly who we are. And you will find people here that will just reach out to you and wanna be supportive and kind and patient and lend an ear when you just need to spout off to somebody. 
this is a place where you can find a home. And I think in this world where there's so much division to have a community of people, I mean, there are about 55 of us on this call this morning. And that's amazing. To have a place where we can be ourselves and to be loved and to know that this is a place where people will be patient with us and people will be kind to us, even when we're not having a day that really deserves any of that. So as we're going through these next weeks and months, just remember, if it's not about love, it's not about God. And remember what love is supposed to look like. Amen. Let us affirm our faith by reciting the words of the Nicene Creed. <clears throat> we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him, all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers, prayers of the, go ahead. The, go ahead. The prayers of the people. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church that no, we are. Sorry, I got it. Sorry. Okay, go ahead, Rick. Forgot to unmute. Go ahead. Um, prayers of the people. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, especially our family and friends on Trinity's prayer list, that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. We offer prayers for our families. Father Bill and Jane Anderson, Amy Backus, the Venerable Frank, Denise, and Anna Bailey, and Diana and Chris Baker. We offer prayers for our frontline workers during this COVID-19 crisis. Nicole, John, Michelle, Beverly Ann, Vic, Brandy, Joey, Jimmy, Kendall, Mark, Robin, Brian, Amelia, Josh, Adam, Sarah, Sarah, Tori, Catherine, Caitlin, Ben, Melanie, Jennifer, Caitlin, Kai, Joseph, Amy, Carl, Victoria, Victor, Becca, Mike, 
Allison, and Aiden. We offer prayers for our military and their families. Lucas, Anna Marie, Chandler, Vincent, Brian, Jerome, Beth, Grant, Patrick, Jonathan, Walter, Justin, Cameron, Adrian, Brad, Cody, Josh, Ben, David, Mike, Kevin, Jerry, Danielle, and Luke. We offer prayers for our college students. Martha, Zach, Virginia, Gabrielle, AJ, Anna, Joshua, JT, Lydia, Ashley, and Joe. And let's say together the prayer for Trinity. Heavenly Father, we thank you for calling us into your service. Our mission is to invite others to be a part of our community, inspiring them to have a deep and abiding relationship with you and to serve all in your name. Help us to respond to that call wholeheartedly and lead us boldly into the future through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbors. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen.
I'm not sure if that's where that was supposed to end. My apologies. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Once again, as we are unable to consecrate, consecrate the sacrament during this time, let us say together the following prayer that acknowledges our dependence on the presence of Jesus in our life. In union, O Lord, with the faithful people of your church, we desire to offer to you praise and thanksgiving. We remember your death, Lord Christ. We proclaim your resurrection. We await your coming in glory. And since we cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, we beseech you to come spiritually into our hearts. Cleanse and strengthen us with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let us never be separated from you. May we live in you and you in us in this life and in the life to come. Amen. Does anybody have a birthday coming up for which you would like a birthday prayer and blessing? I'm scrolling through and looking, for, uh, unmute yourself if you would know that you would like that prayer. Or a wedding anniversary. Anybody have a wedding anniversary? We do. Oh, yay. <laughs> the Johnsons. <laughs> One of our favorite couples. <laughs> How many years, dear ones? 51. 51. You are amazing people. Let us pray for Susan and Tim, shall we? Let us pray. Holy God, we thank you for Susan and Tim, the love that they share with one another and with all of us. We pray your blessing upon them as they celebrate their anniversary. We thank you for the witness they are of your love for us. We thank you for how many gifts and talents they just continually offer uh, all those who know and love them. We just thank you for who they are with one another and with us. And we pray that they would just have a fantastic anniversary. God bless you both. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Wayne. Yes, ma'am. Happy to do it. Um, announcements. Let's just do a, just a couple of brief things things coming up. I just want to thank Chris for being both Chris and Les this morning. Good job. Um, it, it, it's a lot to ask to do. You have no idea how, how the little details that you have to do when you're running the, being essentially the online verger, managing the uh, screen for everybody. So thank you for that. And I want to say thank you to uh, Caleb and every choir member who continues to sing. If you can imagine, the way this works is Caleb um, records the music in parts and sends it to everyone. They listen to it and essentially record their voice a cappella, and then send that back to Caleb where he puts all the voices together. So for those of us who don't like to sing in public, if you can imagine, you're singing into a recording where all you hear is your voice. That's pretty intimidating for a lot of us. And then to come up with an anthem, this is the first non-hymn anthem that we've had since the pandemic started. So a special thank you to Caleb for the extra work and the uh, choir members for learning the music and singing along. And it was absolutely perfect absolutely perfect and just beautiful. So thank you for doing all of that. And I, I also wanna make sure that um, I say out loud that having your music incorporated into our online Zoom service is what's making the Zoom service tolerable. I think it would be a lot harder if we didn't have that and we'd be missing a lot more of in-person church. So thank you for doing that. 
Um, speaking of in-person church, we're actually starting in-person church next week, next Sunday. So um, at eight o'clock, it's only an eight o'clock service. This 10 a.m. service that we are all on now will still happen and it will just still be like this. Um, but we do have in-person eight o'clock. There are a lot of rules around that, which you know, because it's been in multiple emails. If you're not getting our emails, let, let us know. Um, we know a couple people somehow or another stopped getting them and we're trying to get people back in. Um, so let us know if you're not getting them. If you unsubscribe from Trinity's emails, even by accident, we can't subscribe you back in for privacy reasons. Um, the software does not allow us to put you back in because it is assuming that you unsubscribed for a reason. So, but we can help and walk you through the process of resubscribing so that you can get those emails. Um, we still have for next Sunday's 8 a.m. all the individual slots are taken. Um, we still have slots for two uh, family units, which are five people or under, and an individual can sign up for a family spot. So a, a family obviously can't sign up for an individual spots because you can't fit five people in one seat, but you can fit one person in five seats. So uh, you can sign up um, on your own. If you go in to sign up and you, you don't see an individual spot and you know you're coming by yourself, sign up anyway, it's really fine. There's, we, we want you to come. Um, one of the things that's going to happen, and so be on the lookout for this, in the context of that service, I'm going to consecrate extra bread and wine. The following week or so, that is going to be packaged up and we will be sending out instructions on how you can pick up communion, keep it in your home, and then once and then have that communion during this 10 a.m. Zoom, if this is making sense, um, at a future date. We will explain all of it. I'll talk more about it in coffee hour. I don't wanna take up worship time for this, um, but I'll talk more about it in coffee hour and explain it. So if you have questions, you can ask. Um, the Bishop is allowing us to consecrate the elements and distribute them and then consume them during a Zoom worship. We can only do it once a month. We can't do it every week, but we can do it. So, um, that's coming up in November. So look forward to that and we will figure out how to get that distribution. It'll probably be a little rocky at first, but we're gonna figure it out and we'll, we'll get it to you because in addition to our in-person 8 a.m., this Zoom service remains at 10 a.m. until we can be all back together or we figure out um, the rules relax so that we can do something different. So um, that's all the announcements I have for right now. Um, why don't we, we'll just continue with uh, finalizing the service and then uh, we can talk more during announcements. So with that, the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you this day and remain with you always. Silence he wash.
Alleluia, alleluia. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. I want to say um, also a special thank you to Ash.